Hello there everyone, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in TNO, playing as the Qinghai Province, but you might be asking, doesn't does the Qinghai Province have content? Well, we're using a special sub-mod called the Ma Mod or TMM, a TNO sub-mod that which is still in development to try them out. This is a first year demo with more content coming soon. For more information, you can of course visit the Steam Workshop page. And if you want to check out the mod for yourself, the sub mod for TNO, it'll be the first link in the description below. But that's a very interesting image of China on the right side, but we oh there's Tibet as well. And and Hui? And internal struggle as well. Oh god. Oh no. This stuff is very in depth. And I probably should read this but Plays Ma Zhu Yuan as his, and his successor in his quest to stabilize and bring back glory and salvation for the Chinese nation. Zhu Guo Wan Sui. Well, we'll do the best we can and with our focus. 31 years of defiance. Since time immemorial for many, China has been at war. Since decades past, China has known no peace. Since the new century, China only knows humiliation, defeat, warlordism, and province by province. Our motherland is lost to the Japanese devil and their blindly faithful dogs. Ironically, it is now the duty of yet another warlord to bring salvation upon this darned land. Qinghai must not fail, lest the white sun truly sets over this 5,000 year old civilization. And do you actually... No, you don't have any closer yet. And Hui of Pier... They just mentioned it, so I just wanted to see if it was. And we are not in the Japanese faction, which is fine with us. We're so small, we, we're still a warlord that we don't even have the economy to do anything with. And we're losing political power every single day. Ooh, we have old guards. We're led by Ma Ji Yuan, um, conservative democracy, liberal democracy, social democracy, libertarian socialism, authoritarian socialism. We even have ultranationalism and fascismus, and then KMT hardliners. Oh, okay. And what is this? Oh my goodness. Whoa. Hexi Corridor? Is this all the stuff we can get? Kamul? It'd, it'd be a real shame if there were camps here who... Made people here become more concentrated in real life, but some provinces are separate into smaller states. Click on the states for inter interaction. <laughs> it has its own custom GUI, and it also has it in another tab too here, but... Modernization land reform? Holy crap. Social reforms? Infrastructure? Finalized modernization. Ethnic... T oh, I love ethnic tension. It makes everyone hate each other instead of you. Decrease ethnic tension by 10%. <laughs> Minorities into the government. Hold a speech. Decrease stability by 10%. Concessions to the locals. I'm sorry, I haven't tried this off screen at all. This is really cool. This is really awesome. North, this is so awesome. Oh, the national speech we have. Training day and night. We get more daily army XP game. Wow. That's, that's, this is definitely unique. And the mountains, nice. Islamic superiority. We'll tell it to the CCP in our modern age. Low on everything. Oh, justify world goals time, plus 500%. Quiet on the plateau. Weekly stability is really nice, even though we're at minus 60% already. Know how desert, minus 4, oh my gosh, 45% research speed. And we also have modernization efforts. Okay, interesting. As well as a second level of it. But we also have a very custom GU, sort of a GUI here, with the Chinese government. <coughs> The Legislative Yuan, a critical aspect of Dr. Sun's grand ambition in achieving true constitutionalism and separation of power in the Republic of China. In great irony, the central government of the KMT shall follow the same path they have forced the communists to walk a decade ago in the Grand Retreat into the West, in an effort to keep the regime afloat. Most organs of the nationalist government are essentially defunct, leaving the Legislative Yuan as one of the two parliamentary chambers left, however, in compromise with the CCP for the first time ever. An opposition party is allowed into the Legislative Yuan. Long had the liberal... Zhang Zhu Pai and the Neo Xian Conference clique, eager to achieve power for their own Chiang's central clique, have grown weak. In addition, the CCP factions as well as the old left KMT are also constantly looking for opportunities to look forward to forward their agendas. However, the establishment would of course not easily give up, and we have the president here, and we have majority whip, we have uh, interactions with the CCP, which we can disrupt unity and l reduce KMT influence and reduce CCP party unity. Holy crap, there's so much here. And dealing with factions, of course, build fraternity and defend, build, buy support. <coughs> Remind them of our past, curb factions. We're going to need so much political power and support. What is this one? Dealing with factions, support, support. Use to prove specific factions support by 5%. Holy crap. And the same thing for the KMT side as well. 
We have four independents, and right now, party unity is 50% probably? Um, it's not, this is a little higher up here. Uh, support from who? Currently, Kelp C. Committee for Action for the Liberation of Peoples in China. We get a lot of support from the currently Old Guard. This is, and we have the National Assembly here, 150, 100, 110, 150. More political power for influence. Holy, I don't want to screw this up, man. I feel like I'm going to screw it up so badly, but... I'll dream long gone. People gaze towards the east and towards their lost homes and memories. The war has cost our nation too much. We have bled dry, and yet the future for China, or the Chinese, remain bleak. Can we ever free ourselves in this lifetime? The Ma Clique in 62. The Ma Clique are some of the most influential warlords of the old Republic of China. Dom dominating the desert landscape covering Qinghai, Ningxia, and Gansu well before the birth of the Republic itself. During Chiang's de facto control of China, Ma Cliques resisted many attempts by external intruders with little to no heavy weapons, even defeating a communist invasion in 36. However, this relative independence was abruptly ended after the Marco Polo Bridge incident. The Japanese came with their tanks, aircraft, artillery. The fight was vicious. Where the Japanese would bombard fortifications as dust, the Chinese with no modern construction technology to speak of, reinforced them with their sheer will and determination. Where the Japanese would cross the great rivers and exploit the railways, the Chinese blew, blew the dams and keep them at bay, but sacrifices were not enough. They paid with blood for every inch of land they took, but it was not enough. After the fall of Chongqing and the death of Chiang, the rest of China, still untouched by the Japanese menace, collapsed with a little unity KMT enjoyed, swiftly reduced to renewed warlordism. The Japanese did not push any further into Qinghai, but nonetheless, this created a new artificial Hui state to keep the rebels in check. Sensing this weakness, the Tibetans, armed both by the Japanese and the Calcutta regime, launched invasions and seized territory, by the Yushu, uh, sea territory of Yushu, previously conquered by the infamous Ma Bufang. Now the time is 62. Ma Zhuyan, son of Ma Bufang. I've taken up the mantle as the leader of the KMT in exile. His visions are grand but empty, unless we can stabilize and take back what's rightfully ours. The three principles of the people shall unite China. I'll be honest here, I don't know which way I want to go, but uh, maybe just go with the KMT. They seem, because right now we are, you know, the old guards. The conservative democracy came to you right, the old guards and the hardliners. It seems like that's probably the best way to go. God, I want to go to war. But then again, our army is not great, probably. We have six divisions, which it could be could be worse. <clears throat> Infantry experts. Uh, do we have a cavalry person here? Ma. Oh, he's actually leading us. Yeah, he actually he's our own cavalry leader. Look at that. Um, you guys do that then. Ma Bu Fong's son is here, but we have no leader to speak of. Whatever. So we have a little bit of political power. Um, <clears throat> for the KMT, there's just so much here. Oh, what is this? Chinese government, yeah. It was too flawed from the very beginning. Holy crap. Um, if the mod developer is watching, I just want to say, like, I'm very impressed by everything I'm seeing so far. Like, this is this is awesome. This is really awesome. It seems like what the devs are, for TNO originally wanted for TNO, but they just ran out of time. But we'll see what happens before the mod came out, of course. We do need more party unity. My voice is cracking and coughing a whole bunch. Um, M15... I guess party unity is probably really important to get. 25. Absorb one representative for the independence and thus increase. But also reduce independence support by. Oh my gosh. Disrupt unity. Reduce the CCP influence. Reduces party unity. Ooh, I don't want to do that. Communists would only gain strength from. Hmm. KMT party unity. If we could, oh, actually, for over here. To improve the faction support. Oh, there's another one. There's another one here, too. Holy crap. Gain favors from KMT. Gain favors and supporters improve by 5%. KMT influence and in, in independence will rise. Expand in the KMT. Gains one seat in the... From the Lowering the unity can prove helpful later on. Dealing with unity. Expand in the CCP. Huh. <laughs> I don't know. Um, can we just get some more... Can we just do this? So, with influence, cooperation is pretty good. Willingness to cooperate is roughly 80%. So, remind them of our past. How about we come over here? How oh, can you get both at the same time? Reduce influence by KMT influence. Um, reduce CCC party unity. Ooh, I'm not really sure. Influence increase unity more. I want more unity. I don't want to lower our party unity too much, though. So... Build fraternity. How do I get? How do I reduce influence? Oh, we just bought. We just got some influence, so it was worth it. Ten and ten. 
And this one gave us how much influence? Oh, you got 20. Really? We got 20 influence? Alright, so we got 20 more influence. Curve factions? Uh, oh, hold on. I don't want to lose support in every faction. So reduce it. There you go. <laughs> oh, this is going to be... Oh, we can do it again. Can we do it again? Because we're going to lose political... Oh, actually, we're going to... Ooh, well... If you're doing any sort of any sort of interactions, we're gonna lose political power anyway, so I guess more party unity. I could be doing this completely wrong. If I'm doing this wrong, I'm, I'm gonna fix it off screen. So, since I'll understand it probably better off screen. But the year of the tiger. The year of Ray Yin or Water Tiger is upon us. Although Qinghai is quite Muslim, the Wee people still celebrate this holiday with, along with everyone else. With an easy, easy peace, along with uh, achieved on the southern borders. Many are saying that things will turn well for China, that in the next ten years with waters a celestial stem. The Chinese with this divine water will extinguish the Japanese sun in due time. We can use this sentiment to rally much needed support from the locals with a few rallying speeches across the Green Mountains. <clears throat> it was a gilded arrow. He who spoke against the Generalissimo found no peace in, in neither his meaningless high office or the bustling cities and his great mo monuments. Hailing from a province of, of 10,000 mountains, all but one commands his adoration. It's a hill of a hundred states, or stales, proudly displaying the calligraphy of the great householders and poets of old. A green-tinted paradise with caves on every turn, it perfectly fits traditional Chinese aesthetics. This is a place he desired, a place he may rest, knowing the soothing sounds of wind shall calm his heart of revolution forever. There, like the emperors of a past age, he commissioned a tower half a dozen meter high, preparing for his ailing body. Then the Japanese came, like an unstoppable wave they marched. The government moves west, every step a blow to the Chinese confidence. They dared not to inform of other terrible bombings in his home province perpetrated by the Japanese in response to American air raids. Ironically, his life will not be ended by the Japanese, but a nameless American in a car crash. It was thought that despite the harsh war, China and her allies would emerge victorious, and the man may return to his tower with a chide the bones, but the fall of Chongqing finally made it clear that returning was not possible. His ashes were transported west on the road of retreat to Golmud, now a shrine of the exiled nationalists. They pay tribute to his grave every year on the 1st of August, vowing to restore the old revolutionary's bones to the rightful place. The dreams of the elder Qingzi lay scattered, yet we must move on. <coughs> Rouse the soldiers. We lose political power. Um, I do like getting resources. Resources. How many resources do we have? We have <laughs> none. Rebuild the industry first. Cut off from all sides. We can no longer beg for external support. The aid must come from the hands of the Qinghai. With the lack of heavy industry, however, it would be highly difficult to armor men. During the sino Japanese wars, the shortage of domestic weapon production can be traced back to the lack of quality materials to supply the workers' machinery. The great armies of Hanyang and Taiyuan could have produced millions of rifles if a stable source of raw material and fun can be directed towards production. We must ensure this time an efficient and effective system of production will be set up around the city of Jinning, Jinning and prepare for future expansion into heavy industry. The Zengui Zui Chu Yi. Life may be hard out here. Rations a constant war. The Chinese New Year seems to have changed little despite these circumstances. It is the only day where ration restrictions are relaxed slightly, that the people shall grease their lips. Even the high ranking KMT men, along among them, the sons of Generalissimo find their reunion dinner bland as before. Coming from the southern provinces, feeding off the Yangtze, Qinghai is no place for the appetite, but at least the exiles would not end today half hungry. Chinese get together dinners are often compared to battlefields, and in the inner circle of Golden Mood, this is no exception. The nationalists and the communists sit on different tables and spy on each other to pin down their allies, the fence sitters, and the enemies in the upcoming storm. Both sides know the internal divisions of the opposing party, and it's only the Japanese that is preventing open civil conflicts. But what the two parties can agree on is maintaining the facade of stability. A ray of hope is before China, but only if we reach for it. The revolution has not yet succeeded. Comrades, there is much to do. And so passes another year in exile. Hey, what is this highlighted? Is that more liberal seats? Is that just different color? I don't know. Just when, it see, when I see yellow here, it's just popping out to me a little bit more. Hmm. And this one's easy. This part of the uh, decisions tab is just to show you that like, cooldown, state reform, cooldown, tension rising in the northwest. Oh, for every, every state you own suffers 5% decrease in stability. Oh. We must return and... and Return, spend political power and actions in each individual state to curb instability. Okay. Okay, so we actually. Okay, we can do stuff here. Decrease ethnic tension by t that much percent. Uh, concessions to the locals. Uh, more stability actually would be pretty nice. Decrease ethnic tensions for now. And over here. Oh, it's owned by your ally, Louis Yu, so you do not need to manage this province. Oh, that's kind of cool. Okay, nice. By 2.5% to hold speech. Um, I want to get more political power costs and 10 command power. 
and de de increases. Honestly, I'd rather just do this one. 25 political power, maybe? All right, rebuild the industry. Rally the people. For a country as vast as China, there's no surprise that regionalism sometimes overrides the concept of a national state. This is especially true for China, however. As unlike European states of old, Chinese provinces lack communication between them even decades after the Industrial Revolution. Thus creating cultural and dialect boundaries that make it hard for someone in the Northwest to care what is happening in the East when their life is already harsh enough. This will have to change. <clears throat> we must embed the idea of China, a unified China into the people. Only then can Qinghai realize its potential. Hu Zongnan's funeral. It's almost a new year, but in gold mood, there's no red lanterns of joy, but white of sorrow. The city quiets down, mourning of the great general Hu Zongnan. As one of the earliest graduates of Wampoa, Hu uh, uh, has always been a close ally of the Generalissimo and the revolution. During the war, Hu commanded the first military region, a battle hard in formation of 400,000 men strong that fought from Shanghai to Xi'an. His grand army was the sole reason why the Northwest is not yet entirely lost. And it wouldn't be lost altogether if it wasn't for the traitor Fu Zhuoyi's sudden surrender of the 12th military region that led to the complete collapse of the NRA in Shangxi, or Shangxi and Gansu. But a victor or not, China remembers Hu as a brave soldier and leader. Guarded by the 84th Division, the last of Hu's army, his casket is to be buried shallow outside of Gomud, for the old general wishes not to slumber anywhere but the hilly shores of Zhejiang. As the 24 guns facing east salute thunderously to Hu Zongnan's death, Qinghai found itself still in the shadows of the old KMT and its decades-old struggle. But for now, the Chinese must put aside differences, lest the tragedy of Chongqing be repeated. On Xi. A Valentine to remember. <clears throat> White May spent the night all by herself in the empty court courtyard house. Mum and auntie are at the hospitals again. She found the relentless winds of her new home intimidating, but it was not a time for her to call on her mother. She's been all but too busy lately. As soon as the sunlight struck into her room and awoken the little soul, she rushed out to the courtyard waiting. At least she would get some porridge, maybe. When her mother did return, she was weeping, sobbing. Her tears come out and dry up in northwestern breeze. If it wasn't for Auntie Chen, she would most certainly collapse, with many an utter grievance trying, and talking trying to soothe her mother. The girl knew something was wrong. She almost spaced out, not wanting to face all the people in shock or not. She rushed and locked herself in the toilet, thinking, What is wrong with... What is... What is with father going? Is he not going to come back home again? Is he going out on a campaign? Is he leaving us forever? Is it from today? She will never see daddy anymore. The more she tried to come up with anything, the more she is lost in her own world. Why may open the door and come out? I have something to tell you. Why may rubbed her eyes. There were no tears, but definitely a sense of panic. If father's not here and the family would be forever without him, how can we ever move on? As she opens the door, Auntie Chen almost grabs her into her arms. Why may your father was brought to the heavens by Jesus? When would he return? Daddy wouldn't come back anymore. He would watch over you in the heaven. But but no, I want Daddy back. I don't want him up there. The girl almost interrupted the woman's words. What a pity you, losing your father at such a young age, as she embraced the girl firmly. Oh. That sucks, bro. Uh, rouse the soldiers. One key reason why we cannot match the Japanese is the morale of our troops, of course. Who would be willing to fight if all of our soldiers or peasants dragged out from the villages unwillingly, while underpaid, malnourished, and expected to hold enemies back? With little... Training in archaic rifles. This whole concept of beating the enemy with sheer numbers must adjust itself within modern warfare. Sure, nationalism would serve as a great motivator, but it ain't enough. What every man must recognize are hard cash and food. What well, they do recognize is that. We'd rather have a small but effective and well-paid force than a million untrained rabble. And since we're here anyways, as much as I want to increase party unity, I'm just not sure if that's the thing we need to do. So, yeah. Hmm. So let's go back up here and like look at the tensions or whatever here. Uh, I would concessions, yeah. Get way more stability. There you go. Actually, is that worth it? Five political power? Five? Uh, actually, no, it's not worth it, is it? Five? Uh, that's okay. Right? Five? Yeah, actually, that's not bad. Twenty-five so five times the cost. Uh, Fifteen. So, this is five times the cost. Five times two and a half is what? Twelve and a half. So, actually, yeah, that's worth it. That's worth it more to do that one than do the other one five times. So, rouse the soldiers. Because we're going to lose a lot more political power now. <coughs> uh, how much influence do we have? Can we see how much ooh, influence interactions? Yeah, improved Kalp, like, huh? Probably the third position, weaken the two giants, establish a third party. That'd be kind of cool if we could do that, but gains costing them ten influence in exchange shall we align with them further for the independence. Gain five influence for the independence and support us improve. Cool. That went up a little bit more. Um, how much influence do we have? Support is 71%. Obviously, we don't have that much here. Um, here, do that one, I guess. 71.28%. So, we'll see. Stability of priority. 
Qinghai is a highly diverse region since the rise of Chinese and Tibetan empires. Various settlements of different ethnicities dot the plateau, creating new challenges for the old administrations. Pushing around modern reforms must be calculated with every step we make, as they inevitably come out or come at the cost of locals. We must now look into controlling Qinghai and their other lands in the future to ensure a stable foundation may be struck for the great building that is Chinese unification. You can access a management interface via the political window. This is an important aspect of you steering Qinghai province to modernization. Gameplay-wise, you will need to balance stakes to help you integrate territories, construct buildings, and modernize northwest China. Do not be overwhelmed, though, as the initial gameplay will be introduced introduce these mechanics. We get more political power, increase your stability, and care how prosperous and stable your specific state is. High stability is crucial for you to pass certain reforms. <laughs> we'll see. The food problem. Um, feeding our men and women is a top priority if we are to stretch ourselves in the region. It is recommended to improve the food security before selecting illiteracy foci. We don't need food, we just need to read. Long has a specter of famine loomed over China, and in Qinghai there's no exceptions. A province of high mountains and air desert, we can allocate little land to producing food. The food is running low, lower than ever. If we are to do anything, this is the first order of business. Alright, and calculate the rations. Statistics have shown the Gold Mude government may not be using food and other commodities effectively. Some regions like Xinjiang or Jing, Jinying suffer food shortages while having too much commodities with no one to buy them. A thorough investigation will be launched to adjust our policies towards satisfying the basic needs only through calculations. Give the people just enough to keep them alive before we can find other sources of food. Waste not want up, only thin streams flow for long. Restricting food supply will not be a popular decision. Ooh. But it. We have to do that, right? So. Ah, oh, look at that. Ethnic tension. Why does ethnic tension have to go up so high? We're still losing political power every single day. Are we. Oh god, we're actually. Oh, poverty's getting even worse. Agriculture, academic basically getting worse. Where is that? Three out of some. Expertise is going worse as well. <coughs> ah, this is not good. Well, we'll see what happens on the present grip. <clears throat> what is regrettable is not that we have too little, but that we have no clue where food is being produced or to whom they are sent. Having carried over the old Kuomintang government's tradition of relative autonomy, there's little oversight from farms, over farms. Some may call it overreach, or even unjust to forcibly dictate what to produce and what price must the goods be sold at. It is. It is the necessary evil we must take, hopefully. This process can go smoothly without too much resistance. As many of the landlords are of Mongol or Tibetan origin, they surely would not welcome such a change. Add 5% ethnic tension to Qinghai. Well, that sounds great, doesn't it? That sounds really great. Terrace farm all the river valleys will be a monumental task, but given enough time, the land will nurture itself again. That's not bad, actually. That's really not too bad. Just if our world goes down by 100%. That's cool. Um, so, yeah. We'll see what we can do here. I mean, we're at least minus 50% stability now. It used to be minus 60%, so it's looking slightly better. We have a little bit of command power, so who is the most attack? I want, uh, yeah, you, Guo, uh, Zhu Kiao. Nice. We can't even get any more support. Ethnic tensions are still rising. We're getting more fuel, too, every day, which is kind of nice. Uh, why, why do we need more ethnic tensions, please? Study the Southwest model. Terrorist farming in the hills throughout southern China, as well as southeastern Asia, is a tradition embedded into the farming practices. Yet, it is absent in the steep hills of Qinghai. Many rivers originate here in the mountains, feeding lush valleys which remain unusable for agriculture due to terrain. If we are to study how terrace farming can be transplanted from the hills of Yunnan and Guizhou to Qinghai, it will be certain to improve food security. Or insecurity. Actually, wasn't there another GUI they said that we, we, we would have? Um... Uh, it wasn't that one. Was it this one? No. Was it this one? Calculate the rations. Oh, uh, somewhere here, I think. But, arduous march. In the year of Imjin, the Wai Gu, with all of his might, invaded the eight provinces, bringing nothing but destruction, siphoning the wealth of his ancestors. In the year of El Oilmi, the Ronin dashed through the Grand Palace unopposed, murdering all those who opposed Japanese encroachment on his motherland. In the year of Gapjin, the armies of the Orient marched on the capital, leaving behind a trail of death, of plunder, rape, and sorrow. In the year of Gyeongsul, the 600-year-old dynasty falls into the grip of the Japs, and so with it, 30 million souls. Ever since, the shadow of oppression has adored the green mountains and the seas of his homeland. Every step Korea took was soaked in blood of her sons and daughters. Every year living under the close watch of the Wagu brings only more shame. He can only sigh, learning so many of his compatriots now find Korean language and culture fading away while that of the Japanese creep in day by day. He hoped that he could be the modern Yi Sun Sin, beating back the Japanese hordes with bravery and determination. But times when Koreans can stand victoriously against invaders are no more. Instead of victor victories, he only has brought Koreans defeat. <coughs> 
He has failed them. The old man's memory has all been has been all but too heavy, as he decides to pay the Great Lake a visit in an attempt to soothe his mind. But he can never escape. The National Assembly. This is part of Unity's a little higher, I guess. Yeah, 65%. And we're at 60%, so. We'll see what happens. Discussion of land reform. <coughs> yeah, we definitely need to get some land reform. People need food, right? We got more army food, which is really nice. It's really nice actually getting land, like, army XP. And a few more days. <sighs> more ethnic tension, man. What are we supposed to do about that? And the political power issue. But discussion of land reform. Land reform has always been the elephant in the room for China. From local bureaucrats, or bureaucrats to the higher-ups, it's widely understood that the in inefficient system of land ownership in villages and towns is a key reason why China cannot modernize like Japan, of course. Local elites would be opposed to such changes in the slightest, so the reform would have to take stages. First, serfs across Qinghai have been ob obligated to pay landlords outrageous portions of their earnings that their life is nothing short of a misery. By adjusting this, we can reduce their workload, but allow them to have access to more resources to further increase production. The second stage involves selling government-owned land to peasants and offering a loan program to those without land. Peasants owning more land in proportion to landowners would certainly make, negate the latter's power and make everything easier. When the right time comes, we will dismantle pre-existing land ownership arrangements by forcibly purchasing lands of rich landlords and redistribute them to the peasantry. The communists are more than happy to cooperate with us on this matter, a rare occurrence that must be well exploited. A new legislation will be discussed. You can find it in the decision tab in the Chinese government section, the old soldier. Despite the current stances, the old general was still polished his uniform and his rifle as if they were more precious than gold. As he stared, idly stared into the empty desert, he thought his thought diverted back to the past. A past he holds on to so desperately. Time weathers not his will, but his body ever crumbles. Of course, when he wants to return. But how can he find peace and reunion when the very concept of one's country is dis disappearing? Every Korean with a conscience has resisted the Japanese for every step they advance in dismantling Korea as a nation, him, and the Liberation Army have sworn to raise Taigu Ki, Taigu Ki, once more on the walls of Hong Xiong or Dai Trang. He remembers the year of Iru, the great tyrannicide, avenging thousands of innocent people, but it was not enough. He remembers in the year of Gyeongsin. He and his volunteers fought valiantly defending Koreans in Manchuria, much to the surprise of the Japanese intruders, but it was not enough. He and his brethren have offered their blood, toil, sweat, and tears to no avail. He also remembers an old Chinese poem, Enlist in 15, and Return in 80. When I'm 80, there will be a Korea for me to return to? Will there, will there be? But the lake. The Azura Sea has always been an oasis in the middle of the great harsh plateaus on western China and Tibet. Here lush, here lies lush forests and a string of saltwater lakes. Only here can one grasp what an ocean would have looked like. The Green Mountains are often said to be the work of gods, for only an ascent being could have sculpted such breathtaking land to the old man. The scene reminds him of the hilly peninsula. He would argue this land is just as majestic, but something was missing, something he cannot describe. It is without the blue tiles, it is without that ancient speech, it is without his people, his townfolk. And his family. He has always wondered how his sister is doing back there. And his parents. His father gave up his lucrative job because he would be working for the Japanese. His stepmother, her kindness, always supported him when he got in trouble. A great shame he could not look after them in their last days. Without their inspiration, he would have surrendered decades early. And his young wife. He remembers how he initially was angry at the arranged marriage and that the girl was mute. If there's any other he still cares about, it's her. The general married just to be not frowned upon by the society, but since then he had never had to let go of the memory of the times he spent with her and his comrades. They were all young men, men, young men, eager to save the country. He thought of their time in Shanghai, and Wuhan, and Chongqing. The spirit was almost undefeatable. They thought the chances were slim, but there would be hope. That Korea would earn its rightful independence and stand victoriously alongside China, just like Ming and Joseon. Gone are the names and the deeds of the past. No one will remember them and what they have done for Korea. All these faces are now but blurry images, lingering in Li Beomseok's mind, growing ever heavier. All gone, all lost. Can we edit our divisions? Also oh, nice. The Mod Cavalry Brigade. Oh god, these are so small. Okay, we're gonna need way more guns for this. We have so much. Is it possible to get us a 20 combo width? Yeah, it is. This is probably a really bad idea. <coughs> so, we'll see what happens. We're not even making any divisions, which, honestly, is probably not a bad idea. Just because I want to make sure that we have enough strength for these guys, so... I'm gonna assume that we're gonna attack these guys... <coughs> Excuse me, first? Okay, maybe not. Uh, maybe these guys. Yeah, we'll see. I apologize for me coughing just because I've developed sort of a cough. Um, overall. Which kind of sucks, but whatever. How many guns are we producing? <coughs> now, we're making... We actually have some artillery, which is kind of nice, actually. Look at that. See the soft plus model? Yes, please. Now, this... Oh, we have... So much the Year of the Rabbit. Switching the focus tree to 63. Nice. <coughs> How is attention here now? 
I should have said some political power. Oh, it's not good. <coughs> but now we can do literacy after this. China is an illiterate state, and there are little we can do to cover up this fact. While literacy has raised dramatically in the West, as well as Japan during the early 20th century, and China this only extends to a handful of cities and one the coast which are now flying the flag of the rising sun, one would be foolishly optimistic to say even one man out of ten in Qinghai can understand Chinese. Literacy is long considered to be an indicator of how modern countries are, and so we shall allocate massive amounts of resources towards education. Ongoing literacy issue in Qinghai, notice this modifier on research speed may decrease if domestic situation changes. Yeah, new legislation will be discussed. I don't know how that's going to happen. We need political power, but we don't have any. I already spent a lot of political power. Was I not supposed to spend it? My support's still the same. Nothing's really changed here, so... God, I... Can we get some more political power, please? We have Islamic superiority. Can we get rid of that? That would help us out. If we got rid of service by requirement, which we were not going to do, or get rid of... Oh, yeah, we're out of manpower, too. We have high taxes, as well. Disgruntled veterans. Elite only education. No health care. Corby slavery. Ah... <sighs> So bad, man. So what do we have here? Oh, the land reform law of China requires at least 65% in the legislature Yuan. Most members of the Yuan would be supporting this change, causing most factions to gain 2.5% support towards the government, while raising the Kimchi unity by 2.5% and the CCP party unity by 5%, as land reform has always been one of the key engines. This cooperation would raise the unity by 2.5%, showing all people of Qinghai our true commitment to the United Front. Needless to say, the reaction elements in the government would lose but everybody's so slightly unhappy. The Heartlanders lose 2.5%. This decision will further modernization by completing land reform in Qinghai province with reduced penalties. These actions will also reduce poverty among farmers and make life out here easier. So subtract 20% stability in Qinghai and add 5% ethnic tension. We lose political power and get outlawed slavery, but we do get more political power every single day, which is nice. Screw it, we're doing it. We are at 73%, nice. Do we drop support? Um, 62.5%. Now it's over here at 82.5%, 70%, which is pretty nice. Um, old guard is 82 and a half, so we'll cooperate with the CCP, which is nice. If they, at least, if the Heartlanders in power, the KMT CCP would be, ooh, it would drain. All right, then. Proliferate winter schools. Well, winter school is a practice whereby peasants learn about writing and reading Chinese during the winter season, where they have the most valuable time to technology. An original implemented by the communists has also been adopted by the nationalists and their territories for the sake of sweeping away illiteracy. What winter schools? Uh, winter schools must extend beyond winters and forcibly adopted to all villages in Qinghai. Though it may appear rushed, as the food problem is nowhere near gone and we are already demanding more from the people, helping peasants recognizing Chinese would also allow modern agricultural practices to be communicated and spread by the villagers themselves. It would be only easy, easy their life too. Our literacy issue will slowly improve, although additional policies and funding in the future will be necessary to consolidate literacy. Cool. We have 73% still, which is very nice. It's very good still. Um... <coughs> Yeah, maybe I should not have spent all that political power earlier. I, I don't know. So, we'll see. And this is a 35-day focus, so... Civil Rights Act, shortcut to literacy. Shortcut? You got a shortcut. Ancient Chinese insist that in the sea of learning, pain is the only boat that fair people between the shores of ignorance and enlightenment. Uh, Qi Jianghua will show modern problems can be dealt with modern techniques. A young communist official co administrating villages around Golmud with KMT ones. Qi claims that he has found the long-awaited solution to mass illiteracy. Using a three-step approach of learning Chinese characters, results coming out of the areas where schooling is an alien concept can only be described as miraculous. We will invite Qi to demonstrate his methods to all educators of Golmud. Now, so we're losing lots of political power, which is nice. We're going to lose even more political power, but Comrade Qi's plans are proving fruitful and improving literacy. Uh, this has also strengthened the communist factions in Qinghai. <coughs> My apologies. I don't know what's wrong with my voice. Like, it's just not been really bueno. But regardless, make example in the military. The army, be they controlled by the KMT or the commies, are an aspect of society looked upon with respect by the local people as a protector. Launching a literacy campaign in the military would most definitely aspire the civilians to follow suit. Moreover, professionalism as well as the overall image of the army can also be improved. Qinghai's men are often thought to be uncivilized compared to those of Ningxia Ma Clique who are mandated to be illiterate before joining the army, and also happens to have better discipline and attitude towards the local people. We must look up to them to improve ourselves, of course. Oh, look how fast we're building. We're building so fast. And we're building so fast it'll never be completed. We're at <laughs> negative 4%. It's getting worse. Actually, putting things here is getting worse. Holy crap. Look how much stability affects it. And poverty. And service by requirement. And the war we're on war economy, too. Holy crap. How many guns do we not have? Oh, we're actually getting better on guns. I like that we're getting better on artillery, too. Give our 
cavalry divisions, some artillery, because if we do go to war, for the love of God, please, I hope to God we do go to war. I really hope we go to war so we can actually use these guys. I really want strong cavalry divisions. <clears throat> also, our research is so bad. We have literally have 447 days for these guys left, and then um, uh, casually 200 some days for the basic artillery as well. So, uh, Great competitions. Competitive spirit inherent to man can help convince even the most reluctant to learn. Like previous year, a sports day is coming whereby our soldiers will compete against other units in various fields. Some of our organizers have come up with an idea. Plus, know how desert with rampant rampant illiteracy. Get more research speed. And slowly improve, although additional policies and fundings will in the future will need to be addressed. I am just worried about ethnic tensions here. I, oh, that, ooh, that reform. Oh, we can't do this one. Oh my god, we need, how do we get any more political power? I think tension's rising. We have almost no stability in our own pro- I guess this is what was supposed to happen, but, like... Bro. <laughs> is there anything we can do? This is so bad. I'm not feeling good about this. Obviously, we've got at least one more year here as well, but... This is making me a little worried, not gonna lie. Just a little worried. Um, We can't even build anything. Guns are looking... Not terrible. Actually, it's not looking great either, but... You know, it's okay. Uh, let's get some more guns first. Artillery's doing okay as well. Can we just get like a fat 400 political power maybe? I'd love to get that, but crash is averted. The harsh winter is coming and yet our barns remain filled. A toast for efforts. The Qinghai, for Qinghai, advances. One more step in consolidating herself. Okay, so we do get 100 more political power, which is nice. We get more stability and reduce ethnic tension by a little bit. And if we, when we do this focus, we'll get the event. Judicial Yuan Interpretation number 78. Oh man, this sucks. What's the national spirit looking like right now? Um, this modernization efforts. Nothing. Okay. <laughs> the worst has passed. Oh, that's, that's good. It's not great. No, oh my gosh, that's still so bad. We got quite a bit of CCP influence here. Bulgaria sides with Italy. Oh. Hello? Son? Son? What are you doing? Zhang Zhizhong. With a man with too many problems. Uh, how strong is he? Hope he's not that strong. He's got so much manpower. But only two divisions. So we have six. And our horses are not that much better, but... <coughs> they're trying to get better. A race. Usually the military would distance itself in its daily operations from the public to keep themselves shrouded by this year's Army Sports Day. Invited most residents in gold mood. The Chinese are culture imbued with a tendency of joining the Fion, attended in mass. The most exciting aspect is a relay race, especially for the youth who would bid precious sheep's eyes on which you know would finish first. Ugly. <coughs> A sudden shell is not the expected outcome of a 30 uh, Mauser flying into the sky, nor are the, are the men, instead of running off, are scribbling on the gra sandy ground with sticks. The audience, whether it be in awe or simply confused, remain silent. A few men suddenly drop their sticks and burst into the course, as a male voice from a few makeshift mega, uh, megalophones or megaphones around explains the army introduced a new rule. The participants cannot begin running until they've written down a full Chinese character. A meal. Some are writing in their palms with fingers. Dragon. The crowd, the crowd could be heard mumbling. The color blue. <laughs> By that afternoon, children are already mocking the army. <laughs> that's, that's funny. The year of the rabbit. The year of Guaymao, or water rabbit, is coming. Though our efforts last year have proved effective, there are still yet more problems to address. Our land reforms and literacy programs have certainly benefited, the benefited not just the army, but many. But it also came at the cost of some locals, especially minority elite, who are now viewing gold mood government with suspicion. Furthermore, there is also talks of improving our outdated military so that we may ready to expand ourselves. More political power. Completing this focus, we'll switch to the focus tree for 63, focusing on solving minority, social, and military issues. And we still have a uh, slightly better. I do like... Man, you, you can tell that the the devs definitely put in a, a lot of work for this. Oh, it's all bypass. What's the bypass? Oh, okay. So you're the rabbit for this one. Yeah, if you want to buy that one, please go right ahead. Making steps. All right, making the steps. The new cannot come till the old ones are swept away, but for Qinghai, this might be just too literal. Now the momentum for change is on. The people, having experienced benefits of reforms, is of course expected to ask for more. More work is ahead, but we may soon reach the end of the tunnel. It's a one-day focus, huh? After this one, what are we going to do? <clears throat> this tree initiates the long-awaited needed refurbishment of roads, completing infrastructure reform as part of the introduction to the Zai B mechanic. <coughs> For their social reforms have enacted last year, completing social reforms as part of introduction. Win the home front. Ooh, we get a military factory. The minority tackles instability in Qinghai. Currently, there's no effect on your gameplay, save for quarrying other provinces. If you have trouble with stability, it's recommended to take this line before any other mini-focus tree. Awesome. That actually might be worth doing first, just because we have a lot of instability and a lot of ethnic tension first. And the military. And it just changes the military. Convert the NRA into an army of China rather than the KMT. Um, honestly... Uh... 
Oh. Further modernization by completing social reforms. Improves society in various fields slowly. We'll solve the issue at once. Um, what about over here? Long-term project. In gold mood, we lose a lot of stuff. I love to do this stuff. Add 5% more ethnic tension. The minority. Do we get any more political power over here? We do somewhat. Is there any way for us to get more daily political power? This is not bad. Academia Sinica is not bad to get. Listen to them. I like this one, but it has hurt us quite a bit more to get there as well. Um, when the home front, the military, I don't think it's going to really help us out that much for getting more political power every single day. Get some more commies to work with us. Oh, that's not bad either. And with a clear goal ahead. Beginner preparations, nice. Um, no effects on your gameplay save for coring of the provinces. Take this on before any other tree. Oh, no, this one. Minority. China may have many ethnic groups, but only few can rival Qinghai in diversity. Most prominently, the Mongols and Tibetans have both lived in the Azur Z, the name itself derived from Mongolian for centuries, cut off from their own lands to the south and north. Traditionally, Mongols are the landlords and Tibetans work for them, but our rivals tip the status quo off balance. The reforms which have been targeting landowners won some support amongst the Tibetans, but certainly not the Mongols. Saying that they are upset about us is a great understatement. In addition, the Kazakhs fleeing from the growing chaos in Xinjiang also poses a great risk to disturbing their already delicate ethnic relations. But judicially want interpretation in number 78. According to section 17 of the of the 37 and a half arable rent reduction of the Republic of China, balance includes that of officials using unnecessary amount of force and landers are protected from abuses from officials as peasants are. Mr. Zhao Xinyang's case, 43, party affiliation, CCP, overseeing Dulan County, as the reason of the statutory interpretation will be listed as follows. On the 17th of January, a 41st year of the Republic, Dulan County issued orders independent that of the government on the matter of mandatory land ownership reformation in local area, with widespread dissent from local Tibetan and Mongol aristocrats. Mr. Zhao acted against the Constitution of the Republic of China, Chapter 11, Article 2, Section 119 and 120, stating that the freedom of Mongol and Tibetan people of self-governance, and said of the 23rd January commanded communist militias to assault aristocratic states, causing 29 deaths and 19 injuries. Zhao claims the presence of armed fighters is deterring land reform or land reform or reformation. Despite such claims, Mr. Zhao has nonetheless clearly violated the Constitution outlining minority autonomy as such will be promptly removed from the office by the by the 6th of February. Go post it outside and will conclude with alert the government. Ma Bufang, the infamous, have always utilized tension to his advantage, turning the Kazakhs against Mongols and Tibetans to keep them busy while the Hui reign supreme. What was not realized is that he pushed both parties too much. Only recently has been leaked that the Mongols are radicalizing and plotting for rebellions. They deem Qinghai government overwhelmingly biased towards Tibetans and Kazakhs, and intent in enforcing their ancient rights forcibly. This must not happen, but if you enjoyed today's video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow, as we'll see what we can do with the Xin or Qinghai province. Thanks for watching, have a great, great rest of your day.